We're now going to look at two notebooks that show you the power and flexibility of QControl's optimization package. The first is a technology guide called Superconducting Qubits, Improving the Performance of the Cross Resonance Gate. This notebook includes a preview feature. This is something that has been tested and is working in-house, but we just have the last step to make it available on the web platform left to go. So you should expect to see these preview features within a month or so. In this notebook, we create a cross-resonance gate that is robust to crosstalk. To start, let's look at the Hamiltonian. We consider two qubits that are passively coupled. We treat each qubit as an anharmonic oscillator with the number of levels truncated to four. That means that we have two computational levels as the lowest energetic levels, and we have two extra levels, which means we can include leakage in this model. We then uh, consider a control, which drives one of these qubits at the frequency of the qubit it is connected to. This creates a cross-resonance effect that en enhances the amount of uh, the effective strength of the coupling between the qubits. The natural gate that occurs when you do this cross-resonance effect is a ZX gate. Now, you can make this gate equivalent to a controlled NOT gate or any other controlled operation with the, just applying a few local operations. We also consider a noise channel in this notebook, and we consider that some of the signal you're sending to one of the qubits leaks onto the other qubit, creating an unwanted crosstalk effect. We can add this noise process to our optimization like we did in the previous example. So once again, we set up a variety of operators for our controls. In this case, there's actually only one control, which is the into qubit we're driving at the frequency of the other one. But there is a variety of drift terms in that Hamiltonian I showed you before. We then do a, variety, a few different types of optimizations. I'm just going to skip straight to the result. So the first one we do is we optimize the pulse as if it's just a single segment. So we assume that the user has the ability to drive the amplitude and phase, but they're just doing a one pulse. Next, we do an optimal pulse. This is not robust to the noise process, but will be robust to the leakage effects because they're included in the drift Hamiltonian. And here is the I and Q modulations for this particular solution. And lastly, we make a pulse which is robust to both the leakage effects and also this crosstalk effect as shown below. You can see that these pulses actually vary quite rapidly because we haven't in it put in a bounce loop or other constraints, but I'll show you how you can better deal with that later on. So how do we know that these pulses have done the right thing? Well, we can use that same verification technique I showed you before. We can look at their robustness using a quasi-static scan. Once again, we can see that the optimal solution and the robust solution produce a perfect operation when there is no crosstalk. However, the primitive one with single pulse does have some infidelity, showing that we do need some ability to control the pulse in order to avoid that leakage. Next, what we did is we, uh, we can increase the relative crosstalk, or basically allow more and more of that signal to leak onto the other channel. You can see here that that optimal solution rapidly diverges from a perfect operation, as its infidelity leaves from zero and approaches a higher value. The Q control optimized pulse, however, remains robust and has a large plateau of robustness. If we tried to implement these pulses on a real device, we might run into trouble because we can see that these pulses change quite rapidly. So in this next notebook, I'm going to show you how you can add a variety of constraints to make pulses customized to exactly what your hardware needs. In this technology guide, Control Hardware, Flexible Optimization for Constrained Pulse Generation, we show a variety of examples of the different types of constraints that can be taken into account to model real control hardware. In the first example, we consider adding linear filters to your optimization process. This is a great idea if you want to capture the rise and fall time of your signal generator, or perhaps you want to add the transfer function of your control lines. In all cases, we're going to consider the optimization of a single qubit with a dephasing error. So we're going to create some robust pulses. The first filter we're going to consider is a low-pass sync filter. This, makes, uh, this is going to create a pulse which has effectively a finite bandwidth limit. Setting up the optimization is very similar to before. You simply create uh, your controls and the particular Hamiltonian you're going to do, and then hit optimize in one line. What is then returned is both an unfiltered version of the pulse and a filtered version. So the unfiltered version is, again, piecewise constant, and it allows the optimizer to change its values however it wants. But this is then passed through a user-defined filter. So we've defined the sync function, as I said before, effectively giving a hard bandwidth limit. The filtered version of the pulse that comes out, as you can see, is much, much smoother. If you wanted to implement on this device, and in this particular case, it's likely because you know that your system can't handle a higher frequency, you would probably then program this filtered version instead. 
Uh, another option is to use an RC filter. An RC filter might be the case where you have a good understanding of the rise and fall times of your signal generator, for instance. Again, once you do what you do is you simply set up the system as per usual and hit optimize with a user-defined filter. Here we can see that our unfiltered version does rapidly change, but then it is passed through an RC filter, which is the same as an exponential K in the time domain. And we can see that the filtered version is effectively a time-delayed version of the unfiltered version with slower rise and fall times. You may want to program again the filtered version on your device, or if you have a very good understanding of the RC properties of your signal generator, you could even program the unfiltered version. The next example is adding bandwidth constraints by bounding the slew rate, or the difference between each of the segments. We've already been through this before in a previous example, so I'll just skip to the main result. As you can see, we can create robust pulses for a qubit, which have a finite, a bounded difference between each of the segments. This results in a much smoother pulse, which can be more easily implemented on real hardware. The last example in this notebook is synthesizing a pulse using an arbitrary basis. If you happen to have a signal generator which synthesizes things in a Fourier basis, or perhaps you want to use a special basis which you think might be well suited to your control problem, like Slepians, which happen to be optimal for band limited situations, this is a great choice. What happens is you provide, the user defines an arbitrary basis, and then the optimization routine uh, optimizes the coefficients of that uh, basis function set. Here, what we've done is produced an optimization where we have given it a Fourier series basis. This is another way of effectively creating a finite bandwidth limit on the pulse that's produced. All of these hardware constraints can be incorporated into any of the optimizations you perform in the Q-Control package, ensuring that the pulses that you produce are always implemented correctly on real hardware.